Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. It is natural to call Jesus Christ our Lord, and I'm in favor of his lordship. But lordship salvation is a theological term, not a scriptural one. It is espoused by people such as John MacArthur, who now teaches again that it's possible to worship the Antichrist, take the mark of the beast and still be saved. He's gone into full-blown major, major error and false doctrine. This is John MacArthur, one of the proponents of Lordship Salvation. Another would be a gentleman called Paul Washer. Paul Washer, I believe, is a sincere man. I believe he loves the Lord and means well, but his doctrine is contaminated with Calvinistic influence. Let us understand the problem of Lordship Salvation. It is the opposite error, the diametric opposite error on the theological spectrum of the hyper-grace teaching of Joseph Prince in Singapore. What Lordship Salvation teaches is the following. People who we would consider to be backsliders or carnal Christians, you see no change in their life after being born again or at some point they go back to revert to the world. They were never saved to begin with. They need to be born again. They need to repent and believe the gospel. They were never truly born again to begin with. Now, I grant you, there are many people who have made false professions of faith. There are unquestionably people who put their hands up at meetings, come forward at a crusade, or had some emotional religious experience, particularly within charismatic circles, who may never have been regenerate, who may never have been born again. I grant you that is absolutely true. But the scripture also speaks of the reality of backsliders. We cannot assume automatically that every backslider never front slid, that every backslider was never a believer to begin with. That is the essential teaching of Lordship Salvation. They automatically assume that people who appear to be backsliders were never really saved to begin with, which may or may not be the case. Again, it is rooted in Calvinistic error. Now, this in no way diminishes the importance of the lordship of Jesus in the life of a believer. We do not believe in cheap grace or easy grace, neither do we believe in hyper-grace, obviously. These notions that were saved by something that we do are completely false. However, we are saved by what Christ did. And because of what Christ did, then we do. We act, we do, because we've been saved, not to get saved. Now, if somebody does not act, does not live a moral life empowered by the Holy Spirit, if someone is not bearing the fruit of the Spirit, if someone is not witnessing, not in fellowship, not reading the scriptures and praying, if someone is not actively following Christ on a day-to-day -day basis, it may be the case they were never saved. He was not their savior because he was never their Lord. But it is also possible that someone was saved and fell away and they need to repent in order to have the assurance of salvation. Essentially, Lordship salvation denies the existence of backsliders for one reason, for a Calvinistic reason. While the hyper-grace errors on the other extreme, they also believe in a kind of once saved, always saved, that amounts to licentiousness, lasciviousness. It perverts the grace of God into a license to continue to live immorally. While the scripture teaches the grace of God was given to lead us to repentance. Both of these extremes are wrong. Hyper grace on one extreme and lordship salvation on the other. Lordship salvation propounds the idea that backsliders never front slid, which may not necessarily be the case at all. Now, there is a debate even within the Calvinistic camp itself, more or less. Many mainstream evangelicals are at odds with lordship salvation, 
because they feel it somehow impinges on we're saved by grace through faith, period, that it implies a works. Uh, that is their problem. That is their dispute. Scripture teaches we do the works because we've been saved, not to get saved. But if somebody does not have the works or does not have the moral life, there is a question whether or not they were ever saved to begin with. That is true. But if somebody professes Jesus as Savior, but he's not their Lord, you have to ask the question, was this person ever born again? But unlike with Lordship Salvation, you cannot automatically assume they weren't. They may simply be backsliders who need to repent and need to repent desperately. You can't say that somebody who's living a life that's inconsistent with having Jesus as the Lord was never truly born again to begin with. That may or may not be the case. Once again, hypergrace is an error of one extreme producing one false theology, but that same false theology is ironically produced by the, uh, by the error of the opposite extreme, that is the Lordship salvation of John MacArthur and other such people. Bearing in mind, John MacArthur teaches much other error as the leading again, proponent of Lordship Salvation. He's a radical cessationist. He's into all kinds of absurd misinterpretations of church history. He's a, he's a historical revisionist. And he teaches it's possible to worship the Antichrist, take the mark of the beast, and still be saved. John MacArthur is not a source of good doctrine for anybody anymore. That includes his teaching about Lordship Salvation. We do not do anything other than affirm the need for the Lordship of Christ in our lives. If somebody has Jesus as Savior, they will also have him as Lord. But Lordship salvation is something beyond what the Scripture teaches. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you for your question. God bless.